Tron. Last time on John Tron. Drama. I'm sorry. We've lost the baby. Oh god. No, no, no. I mean like we've literally lost. We can't find him. He's gone. Romance. God damn it! I love you! What do you mean you love me? Why would you say that? Playing hard to get, are you? Action. You don't want to miss this. Stay tuned for more of John Tron. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I don't remember any of that happening. That is not what happened in the last episode. What I do remember is that we played a ton of games based on fast food marketing campaigns. But if you thought we were done, oh how wrong you were. Next on the list, The Noid. This was one of the strangest marketing campaigns of all time for Domino's Pizza. What exactly did they think this would do for their brand? Have you ever gotten cold pizza, a squash pizza, or pizza that just wasn't right? One time I got annoyed the pepperonis didn't come on my delivery pizza that I forgot to put them on. He loves to ruin your pizza. Well then, he just sounds like a bad guy to hang around then, doesn't he? But at Domino's Pizza, we avoid the noise. Is this really a testament to the pizza or the box it's packaged in? I don't know what the appeal was here, but apparently he was popular enough to get his own game. Hmm, not gonna tip on this delivery. The game starts off with a yo! Noid update. Wild creatures led by Mr. Green are assailing New York City. Well, that don't sound too good. The mayor knows that only the Noid has the power to stop them. The Mayor, spelled M-A-Y-E-R, huh? I'll assume he's referring to John Mayer. Uh, yes, very popular in the Yonoid universe for, uh, because of how much he looks like a big pepperoni. Using his super yo-yo and other inventions, he will try. <laughs> that's it? He will try? Well, that's all you could ask of somebody, isn't it? Ah uh, yes, the very accurate map of New York City we've got here. Of course, pictured after a devastating nuclear holocaust has ravaged the world and grass and weeds have consumed the lands. Hey, but at least Trump Tower still survived. I started off in Brooklyn. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. I came into Manhattan. Oh God, this is the alternate universe where Trump wins, isn't it? This first level here is already excruciating. The perspective on the water is all out of whack. It's completely disorienting. Sometimes you think you'll land on the wood, but you'll just touch the water and die. Or some fish will come up from beneath you and fuck your shit up. There's no checkpoint, so you have to do each level in one beautiful run. It's hard. Welcome to the pizza eating contest. Oh boy, I think I can win this one. Ew. Ew. Way too much to the pizza. Oh, it hurts, it hurts real bad. <laughs> the area champion goes first, huh? The fuck does that mean? After the end of each level, you get to this strange card game thing. Apparently the pink guy's the area champion? I don't really understand the rules at all. How many pizzas do I want? What, what kind of question is that? Give me them all! From what I can gather, you just pick a bigger number than he picks. And whoever picks the bigger number wins the battle. The first to fill his pizza meter down here wins overall. Pizza meter. I said pizza meter. Don't forget that, ever. Tell that to your kids. Tell that to your grandchildren. So it's just luck, I guess. Why would you ever pick this smaller number? Hee <laughs> hee, I creamed. Yeah, okay, just as long as it's not on my delivery, guy. Isn't that overdoing it? Hey, you're the one that's the supposed champion of this shit! You're the one making me do it! Oh, I get it now. I need to eat a pizza because I'm having a fucking panic attack over here. I need to- I gotta stress eat! Chester Cheetah also had his own game way back when. Chester Cheetah, too cool to fool. Oh God, I move so slow. Is that some sort of joke? He's a cheetah. I think this is the slowest video game character of all time. I mean, the, the turtle is faster. But to be fair, he is on roller skates, so it's not really a fair fight. Maybe this is the actual speed of a cheetah who's been fed an exclusive diet of Cheetos his entire life. The music too, it just ugh, gets in your head, man. If you want to run, which is still not fast by the way, if you could believe it, it might be slower. You gotta hold down a button and then he's like, ah, ah, I'm gonna do it. He doesn't even do it right away. It's the most unsatisfying, anticlimactic thing ever. But at least I can hump the ground in a pipe, in a cave, pipe. Can't get to the exit, but I can do this. 
Yeah, uh-huh, you ain't touching this. Come back when you're older, Daddy-o. <laughs> hey, what about the Kool-Aid man? He's kind of interesting. Does he have any games? I could have sworn I had something around here, but I thought I misplaced it. Hey, dude, what's up? Yeah. Here's your game, buddy. Here's your Kool-Aid game here, man. Here you go. I'm the Kool-Aid guy. Yeah, there it is. Oh, thanks. No problem, buddy. Hey, did you want some Kool-Aid before I left, dude? Yeah, okay. You want to try a little Kool-Aid? Okay. Punch me in the liver, dude. What? What? I don't Punch me in the fucking liver! I don't want it! Man! I said just once, man! That was fucked up! Alright, this is Kool-Aid Man for the Atari! I'm gonna remember this moment for the rest of my life! In this, you play as a jug of Kool-Aid, I guess. If you touch any of these cherry bomb guys, your pitcher goes all around the goddamn place, bouncing from wall to wall. But occasionally, the cherry bombs stop to take a diabetic sugar-lined piss, and then for some reason at that point you can collect them? Huh? What? I can't move anymore. The darkest night has only just begun! I have no idea what just happened. The game just stopped. I mean, I'm at a real loss. It just went black and stopped. I'm not even trying to make a joke here. Can anyone make sense of this? I know it's an old game, but it's not even trying to be coherent. So I'll fill you in. Apparently what's happening here is that below all of this is a body of water. Very obvious, I know. That these guys, known as thirsties, are sucking up through straws. Yeah, those are straws, I guess. Not sure what the multicolor thing is about, but hey! Like I said, this was uh, 1983, anything was possible. They elected Ronald Reagan and he was pictured at least several times with a chimpanzee. Uh, he ran the United States, so it was also uh, in the feature film Bedtime for Bonzo, you know. You can only collect these guys if they're drinking the water. If the water goes down all the way, you lose. A uh, truth be told, I don't know why I didn't buy this game twice. Up next, the California Raisins. Also known as one of the most terrifying commercial campaigns to ever grace the United States. They made Michael Jackson a dried fruit! The King of Pop, they've made him a sun-bleached grape! Now you may not even have known this game existed, but that's because it technically doesn't. This game was fully finished and then never released. The few real copies of it that do exist are held in very high value, so I happen to have a reproduction card here. It starts up with this nice splash screen. Oh, okay. There's some Judge Raisins on a stand. Calrab? What does that mean? Is that short for California Raisins Band? If so, why is it on the Judge stand? Do they own the state? The story here is that the California Raisins have been kidnapped along with all their music, but, you know, did you save an MP3 somewhere? You could just, you know, burn a couple on a disc, then it's not lost anymore. In this game, you apparently attack by scooping a piece of your stomach out and throwing it at the enemy. By the end of this level, there won't be much of them left. It plays pretty close to what you'd expect from a platformer from this era. I mean, it's not great, but I don't see why it was cancelable. I mean, they already spent all the money on making it. There's dead ends on practically every level, which is really annoying. But the bosses are pretty cool, I guess. I mean, I think it, but cool subjective, really. God has forsaken us! Okay, that was the last boss. I put him out of his misery. I don't know if all this was worth it, guys. Congratulate. Oh, okay. When you beat the game, it says congratulations. And it was worth it! All right, here's a more straightforward one. Pepsi Invaders. It's just Space Invaders, but for Pepsi? Oh, but wait a second. Up there, it says Coke? So who's this game supposed to advertise for? Coke or Pepsi? Well, well wait a sec. Coke wins? But this is before the game even starts. I didn't do anything. This is irrelevant to the matter at hand. This is just a statement. Oh, I see, so you're shooting Pepsi as Coke. You're destroying them. Very subtle, guys. After some research, I found out that unsurprisingly, this is an altered version of Space Invaders. But it was commissioned by Coca-Cola themselves for their 1983 sales convention. In some circles, the game is just referred to as Coke Wins. Probably a reference to that. Nice one, guys. Classy. I'm sure everyone was very impressed. Can you imagine them putting this up on a big screen at a convention? I mean, how insecure you gotta be? There were only about 125 copies made total. Nowadays, they can go up for $1,300 or more. Oh, here she comes! 
<laughs> wait, what? If you wait for the pee to come down and kill you, it just never does. What can I say, guys? You have such a superior product that Pepsi can't even win when it wins! Yeah! Coke wins! Fuck you, Pepsi! I'll fuck your mother in your own bed! Okay, Coke, we get it. You had your chance. Let's see how a tasteful company like Pepsi would market their product. <laughs> Well, now we're getting into some deep shit. I don't know if I'm ready for that also. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Believe it or not, what you just witnessed was not the confiscated home videotape of a serial killer's mad ramblings. It was an official cutscene from Pepsi's own official PlayStation 1 classic, Pepsi Man. <laughs> I mean, look at this! This is how it really starts from moment one. It looks like a snuff film or something. As puzzling as it is, Pepsi made the choice to include all this live-action footage as part of the game. The game was Japan exclusive, but all the cutscenes take place in Los Angeles, California with this guy, OG Shunice over here. He speaks English, too. He's subtitled in Japanese. Look, I even found the exact corner he's on here in the city of Inglewood. Represent. Let's get together and make this a hollowed site, huh? Put up a monument or two. It looks like this guy left such a legacy, he ran the whole block out of business. Except for that El Pollo Loco, of course, because let's face it, everybody needs the crazy chicken! Hey, what do you see in there? Actually, don't tell me. I want to keep that part of myself intact. <laughs> You're doing pretty good! That doesn't mean much coming from you. In this world, everyone relies on Pepsi Man to solve their problems by uh, restocking Pepsi machines. Yeah, okay. Checks out. I got a call that a vending machine ahead ran out of Pepsi, and I was just on my way there. Oh my god, that's like real desperation in that man's voice. He sounds like his family's been taken hostage. Whoa, okay, this is crazy. I can't believe I've never heard of this. You run through the streets and even people's homes while collecting Pepsi cans and dodging Pepsi trucks and other obstacles. The comedic timing here is great. It's very Japanese. I don't know though, there's just something unsettling about this. It's got a Truman Show thing going on. There's no music, and everything in this world is Pepsi. They live, they die for Pepsi. Pepsi is the currency, but Pepsi is also the enemy. Pepsi stops us, but it keeps us going too. Pepsi is the hero and the villain. The good and the bad, the yin and the yang. One thing cannot be wholly good or wholly evil. That would be naive and unrealistic to assume. Yes, even our corporate titans have a crack in their facade. Well, their logo, it makes so much sense now. The blue represents the Pepsi, and the red represents the Pepsi. And the white represents an intricate inside job carried out by reptilians. Pepsi hung on a cross. He died for your sins. He was then jabbed in the side with a spear by the Romans. And a miracle! What came out was Pepsi. And the Roman soldier, he drank from the Pepsi and he said, well, objectively, I just prefer Coke. And then, three days later, the Pepsi was flat. Everything's going dark. Oh, Grimbo, bring me a cold one. Oh, no, Grimbo. Grimbo, drink too much. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, Grimbo! Oh, Grimbo, come back to me! Come back to me, Grimbo! Hey, anyone home? We noticed that the tracking chip in your last Macaulay Culkin head bus broke, so we brought you your emergency replacement. Oh, wow. What happened here? <gasps> uh, sorry. I mean, I was playing these video games based on food, and I guess things got a little carried away. Oh my god. I see now. I finally get it. It's all clear. The true meaning of Thanksgiving isn't food, or thanks, or family, or being a good, balanced person with personal responsibility. It's that video games cause everything that's wrong in the world, like obesity, real-life violence, and misogyny. That makes perfect sense, I see now! Thank you, it's hilarious! God bless the US media. A lot of you come to me asking how to make a YouTube video, or just a video in general, really. Well, it just so happens, my sponsor for this episode, Lynda.com, has all the answers you seek. Anything ranging from software questions to the more creative questions. They just so happen to give wonderful tutorials on Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, and Photoshop, all of which we use here at JonTron. But that's not all. 
primarily they're an online learning platform that has over 3,800 on-demand video courses on everything ranging from learning how to run or start a business, learning a new technology, or just learning how to do this. But if you go to lynda.com slash jontron, you can get a 10-day free trial, no strings attached. I'm telling you, these are some really quality tutorials. They'll help you a lot. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope lynda.com helps you sharpen your personal or professional skills. Just don't sharpen it too much, because then you'll become a blade. You might hurt somebody.